Okay, let's get started. Amy Riley. Wow, good. Um, <laughs> that was good, right? I think so. Amy, there's some good news I want to surprise <gasps> you with. Tell me. They found Kate Middleton. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm almost, I'm 70% positive. Are you referring to that footage of her shopping? Yeah. I Did don't you, believe it. Really? Everyone says it's her double. Wait, okay. Well, uh, first of all, okay. I thought for sure it maybe was her, but are you saying that there's some, there's a conspiracy that that's, that he's just walking around shopping with someone who looks just like her? Yeah. I mean, first of all, do they ever shop like that? Well, I, I was thinking this is a reason they have to shop so that she could have proof of life and right. be in a normal, semi-normal setting other than like an Instagram story just saying, hey, I'm alive. Yeah. Apparently she has like a double or like a lookalike and everyone thinks it's that woman because her body language is totally different. Really? And everyone says it doesn't look like her. Well, TMZ just reported that that body double just came out and said I wasn't shopping that day at the market with <laughs> Prince William. Okay. So it's like I think I well you know Andy Cohen how he went. Oh yeah, in. he said this ain't that ain't Kate. That's kind of wild. Yeah. Do you think it's interesting that he is weighing in saying he doesn't believe that <laughs> this is the real Kate Middleton? I mean, I also do think it's sus that it's TMZ source not like British. Right. Oh, oh, you mean like why British people aren't Yeah, like I feel like the uh I don't know. I need the AP to weigh in. Right. I need like a real newspaper, you know, proof of life. Yeah. I think British people are mad that we're speculating about where <laughs> their queen in waiting is. You think? Yeah. They don't like, um, it's, it's, I think it's starting to be a huge rivalry between <laughs> the countries because yeah, they don't, they, they're like, you know, get over it. Like yeah. we, we know what's going on with our wonderful Royals, don't speculate from your American, you know, vantage point. High horse. Yeah, they're kind of like high horsing us about <laughs> that we're trying to make a tabloid fodder okay. about their royalty, I think. What do you think LVP says? That would be an amazing question to ask her. I think without a shadow of a doubt, she would say, that's Kate Middleton. Yeah. I know her uh, completely, and I really <laughs> believe that's her. Yeah, I, I could picture saying it's all ridiculous. How could people te like? How could what was so different about the body language that people experts are saying was different? Apparently, she has just like a little more pep in her step. This woman. <laughs> so Kate Middleton <laughs> doesn't normally have a lot of no. Also, pep in her step. their real excuse is that she had like a gnarly surgery, so I don't know why she's bopping around in jeans buying like tomatoes or whatever the hell they were doing right okay so you're still you're on <laughs> you're still fully believe that kate middleton is locked away somewhere and this was uh someone to to uh what's that called when you try to get the scent off something yeah to yeah it was a red herring okay all right well that's good um well we'll i mean i guess tbd <laughs> right if we'll find tbd out. tmz right we'll see good okay well one thing i wanted to say is that we're in sort of a unique circumstance right now i don't know do you want to talk about that on turtle time a little bit yeah i'm like we're recording at an unexpected time i have a job i need to do when we normally record so we are doing sort of a fun evening edition where we're gonna we're chatting right now and vanderpump rules is about to start we're gonna watch it together and the valley yes and then talk about it right after right so it's good. So it's going to be some of the hottest takes I think you can ever have. <laughs> yeah. One take wonders or like one watch wonders because we it's just going to be fresh on our minds, but we're not going to be able to watch it again. Right. So that could be really, really good. People will be <laughs> like, that's the hottest take I've ever heard straight from the horse's mouth right after the fact. But it could be also really, really bad. Yeah. We'll be like, what the hell did I just watch? Or we won't remember anything. Yeah. But I think that, you know circumstances have made this the reality and i think that we should you know we'll be able to do it and yeah. it'll be fun and we'll just have the hottest takes that anybody could ever imagine takes yeah. that just happen directly after an episode yeah and then if we have energy after which i cannot guarantee we might go pop over to schwartz and sandy's because they have viewing parties every tuesday 
and yeah. it is in fact Tuesday. Right. So we'll let everybody know if the energy <laughs> level are, are still high after we record and if we're going to yeah, race over. If we're riding high. Okay, cool. All right. Well, are we, <laughs> is that a good, wonderful five minutes? We talked about Kate Middleton. We talked about what we're doing and then, <laughs> and yeah. then we're going to watch the episode. Yeah. And we're about to see Jax's re-entry. I'm excited. Me too. I, um, I, did you watch the clip of his like a minute and a half of him yeah. coming? Uh, he comes in hot. Yeah, it was awesome. I I felt like uh, it was very fun to have that Jax energy in there. Yeah, I like it because with Sandoval, everyone gets mad at us. And it's like, yeah, yeah, he's a freak, uh, loser, cheater, whatever. People say freak? <laughs> I think we did. We said Tom said, oh, oh, right. Yeah, 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 we did. Um, but there's a little more nuance to be had about like, is he bad to the core? Right. Jax comes in and you're like, this is pure fun. Like he's just crazy. Jax. Yes. Yeah. And also there is something very fundamentally silly about <laughs> Jax judging anyone else's behavior. <laughs> yeah. And he knows that he has really, uh, you know, not a lot of, uh, you know, counter to what Sandoval did. Cause he's not, a, you're no the, angel sweetheart. Right. He's not a pillar of moral <laughs> excellence at all. No, so, he's literally, I mean, I can't wait for the real dirt on why him and Brittany broke up. I yeah. mean, we can imagine, but yeah, I can't wait. I mean, we might get little glimpses of what the hell's going on on the Valley. I know, I guess I, 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 I can't believe that I'm actually interested in seeing what happens on that damn show. Yeah, the second trailer or whatever that was really, really helped me to realize that this is just a third of the Vanderpump Rules cast that we know and love, and we get to see what the hell they've been up to. Yeah, they're forcing us to watch two shows instead of one, though, which is unfortunate. Yeah, but it could be the secret, (laughs) uh, you know, way to wedge them back. If the Valley is popular enough and they they do testing on the audience that we still love to see these people, they might be like, okay, it's a testing ground to bring some cast members over to Vanderpump Rules. Yeah, I mean... I did see Sheena just moved to the Valley, which feels possibly aligned. Like that she wants to move on to the Valley show. Yeah. In case that VPR just dwindles away because yeah. I was listening to that old Stassi clip from, I forget what podcast she was on. I can't keep it straight anymore. Maybe it was hers, but she was explaining, or maybe it was Jeff Lewis's. She was explaining that before she got fired, they were straight up going to make Vanderpump Valley Rules or whatever the fuck it was going to be called. And she was going to be on that. Her wedding was going to be like the opener, which again is so heartbreaking that it's not a thing. Um, But yeah, so I think in the back of their mind, that's always the escape hatch plan. Yeah, I was just going to say that. A little, um, yeah, parachute in case Vanderpump Rules crashes and burns. Yeah, and then they'll try and find new, interesting, young, hot people, which is like the hardest thing on planet Earth. And I don't have much... Um, hope that that can happen. Okay, cool. All right. Well, yeah. Well, let's watch this. The newest episode of Vanderpump Rules. It's called Peaks and Valleys. And then we'll watch the Valley, I think. And then we'll come back with the hottest takes that anybody has ever heard uh, on Earth. Great. Okay. Here we go. We're back. <laughs> Why does it feel like we had to watch forty-five hours of Bravo right now? I think because. You know, <laughs> watching that like that consecutively, two different shows, plus watch what happens live while we eat sandwiches from All About the Bread. <laughs> it felt overwhelming. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be kind of, not to come in negative, but kind of a slog to have to watch both every week. Right. Do you think because, well, just for us, you mean? <laughs> well, in ge- well, I guess in general, I probably wouldn't watch them like, if I didn't need to comment on them, I wouldn't watch them on the same night. Oh, right. You I would leave. let the valley fall behind, probably. Right. Well, maybe, I mean, you know, how we do it is, you know, sort of... You know I just I mean? I think it's, like, greedy. Like, that's why I don't watch The Bachelor or shows like that, because they, you know, get high on the hog, and they make you watch so many hours per week. Do you think you think Bravo's high on the hog? <laughs> They're trying to use Scandival to make us interested in doubling down in our Vanderpump content okay right yeah I guess I'm I'm like I think more entertainment you know is good if we weren't if we didn't feel personally like uh what's that called overwhelmed you know overwhelmed by it like it's it would be good to have I would rather have summer house after Vanderpump so you're just talking about in terms of scheduling yeah, it just feels like too much of the same thing. Okay, yeah. But I guess I understand why they did it. Because yeah. from a programming 
standpoint, it's like, you like Vanderpump Rules. Let's show you very close to Vanderpump Rules for this yeah. content. I wonder what the drop-off will be. I think a lot of people would be enticed. I mean, I think they segued it in a big way. <laughs> like, it ends. Just like you said. It ends with Jack saying, I can't do shots, guys. I have to go um, to bed. I don't stay up past 10 p.m., <laughs> So I'm going to drive in this car and leave. And he goes, oh, but I wish I could stay and do shots. I wish he would. I wish he would. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, he could have given himself a pass to say, I, but I think he had to be representative or be, this was an analogy for yeah. his, a metaphor for his current yeah. life. And then the confessionals, I had no idea they were going to do it. Jax gets up. He rips <laughs> off his shirt no he he keeps his clothes on right but he just rips off that mic and then he goes to the set which presumably is like right in the same space yeah that could have just been a little bit of you know it looks like the same studio as um the after show right yeah did you like how they did that segue (laughs) it was fun yeah i mean they this is the small this is the small version of what they did for vanderpump rules and summer house when they introduced it through other shows Mm -hmm. those were hybrid half and half it was like and now i'm gonna go meet my friends at at summer house and then kyle took over the episode halfway through that vanderpump rules episode they're more half and half and we right like when you watch either show they each have an episode that is both yeah and then they have yeah it's like and then i if i remember correctly vanderpump rules transitions to summer house by having the first 20 minutes be like okay now we gotta go and then it's like well let's leave our friends to having the house and then it's the, the full pilot of summer house happened uh-huh. this was more like this was at the very end like two right. the last two minutes yeah the segue yeah yeah uh what did jack say he's like i'm not as uh wild and crazy as i used to be and then that was it yeah, he said, I'm not as, like, just what you said. I'm not as wild and crazy as I used to be. Um, right. But then he, well, yeah. So do you want to talk about <laughs> do you want to talk about the Vanderpump Rules episode first? Sure. I mean, I guess, what, what did you think about overall that night of programming we just watched? Um, that Vanderpump Rules episode was kind of whack, I thought. Yeah, I thought it was a, um, I thought it was a really messy. And it felt like, I don't know, like, the straw that broke the camel's back like they've been like stringing it together so far being able to deal with what happened last year and then this felt like the first time they tried to bridge into something new and it was like a disaster (laughs) yeah i think so um i think this must have been around the time when evolution and alex baskin said get into our office right now we have a huge problem yeah because uh this was a, a, a mess. Editing From an editing standpoint, it was a mess. It also felt to me like a Secrets Revealed episode where I don't know if any of these scenes are essential to the overall arc right. of this season. They all felt like uh, scenes that didn't need to exist. Like you don't need any of these episodes for, yeah. for the future of the, sh- the season. And um, we talked about this at the time, but the Belmont scene, I think it's one of the sloppiest, weirdest, scenes i've seen in vanderpump rules in forever right like they didn't even say it was someone's birthday or they're going out to celebrate x y and z or um even necessarily like tom invited people out to try and reconcile like it was just like we're filming a scene and and then it was clear ariana showed up because she had to <laughs> we're not getting it wrong right that the, the- they didn't introduce that at all. All of a sudden, they just showed everyone at a at a private event, basically. That, you yeah, know, I the, think Tom kind of said like that he's working on getting people back in his good graces, but I don't understand why every single cast member would be down. Right. No. And then Ariana has to do the thing of like explaining why she's there, and she just says, "I'm not going to let Tom Sandoval, um, you know." stop me from hanging out with my friends, which is what she said when she went to see you next Tuesday. Like she already used that excuse. So I feel like this was after the meeting when they said, you both have to go to the same event at some point. And then this was the producer led scene where they said, this is when it's going to happen guys make this work. But they didn't try to justify it in an organic way. And then it just fucking flopped. Like Tom (laughs) Sandoval, like 
left the scene which he never does right yeah it's like i guess this is what happens when they don't film at a vanderpump restaurant it just feels very wrong yeah it did it really i mean and i would prefer them to go to different restaurants other than yeah. sir and stuff because they're getting too unwieldy to even film at but if the alternative is this where it's rented out for them plus four friends it felt really off yeah it was just quiet it, and strange yeah it was like a stage play yeah. it was like it was like a like a like a um like a little theater room where they could have this scene <laughs> black if, box theater black box theater and it felt like everyone was trying to figure out what to do here and right. once sandoval acknowledged ariana he didn't do anything with that information he mm -hmm. just ariana was like uh he keeps looking over at me or whatever but I, I don't know. That scene was just like a mess. Right. And, and then I thought, okay, maybe they're doing secrets revealed style shit because they didn't know how to wedge in the valley and wedge in that Jack scene. But the fact that it wasn't, you know, it was a full episode and they just had the Jack's tie in. Maybe they just had a really hard time getting what would be the content for the valley. And mm -hmm. so that's why this episode just felt like really shitty overall. Yeah. I mean, because in that case... They could have just had a joint pool party or something, or like she could have been at, I don't know, it just felt yeah very shoehorned. And like, I mean, his pool party also sucked. Yeah, let's talk, let's talk about that. So, well, first, uh, we find out that Tom's having a pool party. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, when he first mentioned that he's having a pool party, I thought that this would be the first event where most cast members go besides right. Ariana. Yeah. Because he's sort of, I don't know, he's setting up like, he, I think he, I feel like he told everyone in in the last episode like I'm thinking of having a pool party. Yeah. But no one shows up except Schwartz. Right. Right. Yeah. So it was all it was basically his birthday party again. Right. Like but, we already did this. Uh, Schwartz left early again. Yeah, and I think the reason why Schwartz we're going fast, but it's like because we're I think you and I are both just processing what we saw <laughs> in real time. We just ate like 14 inch <laughs> sandwiches and drank a beer, and now we're like, what? <laughs> so I think. This was also a messy, sloppy scene. I think that they wanted to do a, a like a Tom Sandoval meets women scene, meets huh. people, and possibly starts to flirt, which is what Schwartz advocated for at the Rat Pack dinner. This is like complicated, but this is how my <laughs> brain is working. So Schwartz advocated for him seeing people at the Rat Pack dinner. And then when it actually came time to, time to have a scene like that, Schwartz was very uncomfortable because he doesn't want to be associated with Tom Sandoval in the dating mm -hmm. world again, especially at his house that yeah. Ariana still lives in. Yeah. So I feel like Schwartz bowed out of an actual real scene because he realizes that Tom Sandoval took his like advice, his storyline advice, mm -hmm. and then he doesn't want to be around for the aftermath because already he feels so conflicted about being Sandoval's friend anyway. Yeah. And so I, then I think that the scene sort of flops because tom sandoval doesn't have any of our the other cast members to like work off in this scene right. so we sort of just left alone yeah to and flirt it felt like he was giving up like billy lee was like so like did you you know i there was that friend i wanted to set you up with like yeah. are we gonna have an after hours thing here tonight and he's like no yeah. he's like i'm not gonna go crazy tonight like he just like wants to stop talking and then when those girls apparently from see you next tuesday whoever they are come over and they're chatting in the pool he's like not even trying like it's like no. he is putting it in his confessional he says that he's like socially awkward now because he's been so exiled but it's very weird yeah he's saying i mean obviously doing some of the worst flirting that humanity has ever seen and he says he's <laughs> off his game but yeah. he's like just so you know uh you know i i live with my ex-girlfriend which they're acting like they don't know but they right. were at see you next tuesday so good job on them i mean good <laughs> acting for you both to pretend that you don't know tom yeah. sandoval's history and then he's like um just so you know i've never been married but knowing me i'll probably be married by next year uh just kidding and i was like huh yeah he did a lot of just kiddings and then at one point he's flopping so hard and he goes just so you know i also um my ex-girlfriend is like locked up in a room upstairs and i crush little potato chips and wedge them <laughs> under the door for her to eat and then he goes just kidding and then there's like an awkward silence and he goes like woo <laughs> so, so uh and then also the billy lee thing <laughs> just so that i don't not mention billy lee it said t is Billy Lee's friend, uh -huh. and T is the one who he was first spotted out with, T-I-I. -I. She was just spotted out with him. T-E-A? That's T. <laughs> That's T. <laughs> so he... 
So Billy Lee brought a friend that she wants Tom Sandoval to flirt with or whatever. Yeah. So Billy Lee she's is like, producing. She's like, if it can't be me, I will bring someone. Yeah. And so she's like, don't you see my friend over there? Why aren't you flirting with my friend or whatever? Yeah. And then that's why the, I, I think the hangers on, is that how you say it? Hangers mm-hmm. on. Tom Sandoval's hanger ons, hangers on, <laughs> had their way with that scene and they made that what they want and they flop so hard that yeah. tom schwartz had to say that was fucking weird in there yeah he said that yeah for schwartz to call, call something weird yeah that never happens yeah he thought he felt like it was weird energy bad vibes it, i mean it was it was a bad vibes pool party yeah no it looked like it sucked and, ass. Then, and then also i'm sure they cut around a lot of people trying to have their moment there was the person that took their top off and Flash the the, right. the cameras with their bare breasts. <laughs> and uh, like you could see Israel, the, the guy who works for Sura, oh, right. he was trying to have a little bit of a moment the in the sun. The tallest man on earth. Yeah. Billy it tried to like get in there. Jason, I'm sure they had to cut a lot of stuff of those people like trying to make a meal out of that scene. Yeah. But once Schwartz left, it just... It can't be justified anymore. The scene is <laughs> over. And that's why Sandoval has no energy and he's just flopping like a fish. Yeah. Um. I also quickly need to throw um, Joe under the bus because there's a scene where Schwartz and Joe go on the Echo Park Lake Swan boats. And we got very excited because she goes, I need to tell you my turtle story. And she's like, do you want to hear my turtle story? We started going, turtle story, (laughs) turtle story. We were so excited. Yeah, And then she tells it and it's that she would walk her turtle on a leash and then it fell in a sewer grate and... There was no more story after that. She said it became a ninja turtle. And I thought that Schwartz would maybe be more horrified by that, but he thought it was funny. But then again, not to be cruel, but he did kill his lizard. (laughs) Yeah. I, he didn't want, he didn't mention that. He didn't want to, he didn't want to. He's like, I killed a reptile. Yeah. He, I don't think Joe should tell that story again. (laughs) Never. Um, the rest of the story should have been that she called the fire department. They pried the grate off and yeah. that she got it back. Yeah. I mean, I know like I, I, I can't even imagine the day in this household when the parents said you were walking, you know, <laughs> Mr. Turtles outside and he dropped into a sewer grate. Yeah. Like, that's. <sighs> She's a nightmare. I don't know why. Joe. I mean, the fact that she doesn't. I mean, I maybe we're. I'm too sim or like being too sad about this. But the fact that she thought that was a good story to share for her second scene or third <laughs> scene on Vanderpump Rules. That's not good. Yeah, and I know you won't say it, but everyone <sighs> online agrees. Her hair in her confessional looks worse than anyone's hair has ever looked in eleven seasons, and she's a professional hairdresser. Can I leave you out on a limb? <laughs> I, I'm fine. I feel very easy breezy on this limb because it's a fact. Okay. And she sits, um, I don't know if she's barefoot, but she sits crisscross style during her confessional, which I don't like. Okay. Yeah. A different kind of confessional energy. I'll give you that. But I thought her hair looked perfectly fine. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I, I want to say, um, I love this Echo Park scene, not for what Joe said. I thought her story was uh, horrible, but I used to live right on Echo Park mm. Lake and I got a, a nice little nostalgic um, tingle yeah. as I watched them do that. That was the lake that I walked around almost every single day of my life. Lovely. Echo Park has changed. Oh, for the worse, <laughs> right? Well, it's just more gentrified than ever. Oh, but. okay. Oh, what, during <laughs> well, when I left during COVID, Echo Park was having a little bit of a rough time. Yeah. But um, it, anyway, I was just happy. Like I feel like they always show Echo Park Lake as the mm-hmm. B roll, and I always get so excited. You know, I'm like, yeah. hey, that's Echo Park Lake, but they don't go there very often. So yeah. that was fun let's get the vanderpump gang to a dodger game do you think they 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 should yeah that would be so nice i mean but i think filming would be kind of horrendous there get them a suite you could probably film a a suite at a dodger game that would be nice um i i wanted to ask why does schwartz want to have rom-com scenes with joe while actively saying i don't like joe and i need to be single like wasn't this kind of giving yeah. Like a sweet walk in the park with on yeah. the, like a swan uh, <laughs> yeah. boat ride. I think he's like desperate to have scenes with someone that's not Sandoval. So he's like, please do this with me. And he even says, he goes, I could probably marry Joe right now and be happy, but I don't want to do that. And, you know, he was saying it's not his time or whatever, but I'm like, why does he keep saying shit like that? Right. 
And, and is the common consensus that Joe wants to be in a relationship with Schwartz if he'll have her? I think so. Because later when uh, she gets her reading from Allie and Allie oh, says yeah. they have like friendship star alignment or whatever, she like is like, no. Allie goes, I've never seen anything like this. It's friend, friend, friend. The most friendship <laughs> energy I've ever seen in my life between you two. It's yeah. Like, she didn't have to say all that. And she was like, but sometimes... People marry their friends. That's fine. And also, Allie, last episode when she met Joe, she goes, you guys are giving friends. It's giving <laughs> friends. Really good friends. Why does Allie keep wanting to say that? I think she's just trying to twist the knife. <laughs> um, okay, well, uh, so yeah, uh, Schwartz then, yeah, you're right. He said, uh, I would marry Joe in a, in a New York minute, but I want to be single for a while, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was, um, um, oh, I wanted, to, I wanted to pick apart something you said. Is Schwartz, do you think, in the doghouse with other cast members and he can't have scenes with a lot of the other cast members? So if he wants an alternative to Sandoval, he has to have Joe? Or is he being a good person and uh, creating a bridge for Joe to be a cast member? I think he might be, I think he might be giving us Joe to get her the, from the friend of to mm-hmm. full-time cast member. That would be insane. I can't see it. But he's... but. Um, but Allie had a scene with her, a one-on-one. I mean, that's true. Like, and the confessional and the confessional. I mean, like this is her trial. This is her, her trial to p- potentially be a cast member. So he's kind of doing a, a nice thing to present her to the world so many times in yeah. different scenes. Yeah. I don't know. I just, she, I, did we talk about this last week? I, I saw someone on TikTok say this and then I think other people have agreed that, she the most accurate description of her is that she's the millennial that gen z makes fun of yeah i I, i've seen that um like okay who makes fun of millennials (laughs) gen z does yeah for being like chuggy and like basic corny is chuggy basic yeah like embarrassing okay well i think gen z is (laughs) embarrassing sure but we don't go making fun of that. Well, maybe we do <laughs> all day. But so she's, well, you know what? I think, okay. I, I like to be mean, you know, I like to be mean <laughs> and I'll be mean anytime, but I don't want to fully just say <laughs> Joe's a goddamn dud. Like it, like if you and I were cast on Vanderpump rules in our first season and we were friends of like at Tom Sandoval's <laughs> birthday party, or, or we were at that pool party and he, and <laughs> we were trying to like make a mark on Vanderpump Rules, don't you think we might do something dumb and silly and look like millennial characters? No, I'd be like boring and not talk. I would not talk either. But I'm <laughs> she, a I saw someone comment that she definitely makes um, F slur sounds with her armpits. Oh, and that like, was very accurate. To like me. it's giving put the fist under the armpit and make yeah, like, your armpits. Ring, ring, ring. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, you're right, but I can't tell. I still, I need to give her she's a little bit more. She's serving goofball. Yeah, she served, we said that last week. She's serving a little bit of goofball, but I need to see her in, her in more instances because at the alley scene, she wasn't pure goofball, and I have to give her a little bit of leeway that it's not just <laughs> on-camera jitters, which... Yeah, I just, she's just very strange. Like, um it's not just the goofball. It's like whenever she's not goofball, she's very serious. Like she wants to talk about like deep shit. Like um, that text that they showed that she sent to Katie, like I honor your vision for the future or whatever. I'd be like, I don't need to talk to you like that. Yeah. We don't, some people don't like people that like get too deep early. Right. Or talk too fancifully. Yeah. Like she posted uh, something about Schwartz. I think like the other day where she was like uh, talking about how great Schwartz is and how, yeah. I don't know, just like, yeah, her flowery language is a bit much. Yeah. Okay. For me. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, just give me, I'm not, I, give me a little bit of time to, before I fully stamp the dud stamp on her. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not fully there yet. Okay. I, I trust that maybe Schwartz does see some unique magical spirit within her and it just does not read well on camera, at least for these first couple scenes. Yeah. You, Rachel, not that she ever got better, Rachel <laughs> Levis, she Uh-oh. got better. No, 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 she got better on Vanderpump Rules, but she was very, very uh, aw- like bad on camera. Like, 
remember when she did that like puppet show with her like boa dress and was doing the puppets talking back and forth and it was madness that was her that was her comfortable on camera I felt <laughs> like but I'm just saying the early days of well she's not a great example but I'm just saying you never know how people truly are and we've only had three scenes with it her. worked out great for Rachel right I know Rachel's not a great example <laughs> at all but I just want to I want to give Joe a little bit of the benefit of the doubt before we all call her like lame and shitty and a psycho like we're taking our cues from from Katie which I love Katie but Katie has the worst interpretation of Joe yeah. because of what Joe did, but you know what I mean? I'm just not fully ready to hate Joe. Okay. But I don't have to. <laughs> but did you hear, I went last in the Joe segment. The last thing I heard is that she got invited to the reunion and she said, my voice is hoarse from talking so much at the reunion. So oh, that yeah. means she was invited to <laughs> yeah. the reunion and talked a lot. So what's going to happen with Joe in the next seven or eight episodes that's going to make Joe prominent enough to where she's out on the couch. Right. For a long time. Yeah, I think that's the post I was looking at um, where she she was like, to all my supporters, like, I thank you for your positive Riley, energy. <laughs> half of turtle time. Yeah. yeah. And then she was like, and to the haters, not so much uh-huh. or whatever. And I was like, okay. It's, it, it is, you have to think it's a little wild that she has full-blown haters for, for an audience that has only known her for two episodes. Yeah. I mean, I don't give a shit about what Schwartz does. I'm not like coming at it from an angle of like, he's not allowed to move on. But um, yeah, it's just a strange dynamic. Um, I also am concerned about what he's up to out on these streets, making TikToks with that young woman. Yeah. Um, I His judgment is uh, not as great as you would want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I think, I don't know. I don't, we don't know if he's dating that person. I mean, right? Mm seems pretty implied it, i mean has there been anything more than just those two tiktoks that he took with her in, in vegas or wherever i feel was? like they've been like all around town and then i think um one of our friends saw them together at schwartz and sandy's oh, really yeah okay well but you know who know i mean they're going steady or whatever sure i mean we could have thought that sandoval was going steady with t when we saw those <laughs> just those two photos that we saw but he yeah. does have a girlfriend now right? sandoval yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah he was with her at the uh, vanderpump uh, rules premiere and they were in Vegas like this weekend. Yeah. We're going to see them right when we go to uh, Schwartz and Sandy's right after this. Oh, yeah. We got to get our energy up. Yeah. We um, also, we um, we skipped over the Sheena and um, Ariana conversation, which is, I mean, it was not that exciting. But uh, I, I think it's very bold that Sheena, I wonder if she knew what the internet was going to say about this crusade, if she would have rolled it back way back. For sure. I mean, like every comment I read about Vanderpump Rules in any capacity says, like, how will this affect Sheena? I, yeah. It's bordering on like Taylor Swift snakes emojis. Like, yeah, it's like the joke of the show. Yeah, I know. I, I it, it's I don't know why, why she thought <laughs> it would be sympathetic to say, I really wish I would have been on Dancing with the Stars. She said she cried. Yeah. Um, just I feel like that's so embarrassing even like to a close friend to be like I wish that I would have found out directly from you because you knew how much it meant to me like uh was it like a dagger in my heart yes did I have a good cry yes it's just like you have to kind of just like eat that up by yourself like that's so embarrassing uh, yes if she would have swallowed that and ate it and let it just eat her up um that probably would have been better but aren't you happy that Sheena is honest and authentic to herself and says the things that she truly feels? She wanted Dancing with the Stars really bad to the point where even Lisa knew when she got it 10 years ago that she yeah. wanted to be on it. And, and, and I know she's like, I took lessons and you knew that. I think there must be more to this story because Sheena keeps talking about it. I think that a producer must have called and then Ariana got it instead because mm. she said she took dancing classes. Yeah. And then in this, she said she gave another little hint like, like I really knew I was in the, I was really close and maybe she didn't want to get too deep yeah. into the production. But if she was really close and she's wanted it all her life, I think it's fine to bring up to your friend. I, I really do. I, I'm not, I'm not even just standing sheena for no reason because she follows me it's because 
first of all, we like not unself awareness. What would the show be without it? And if she would have just said, I'm not because for because of how it will look, I'm not gonna say my truth feelings, then this show would not exist. Yeah. But you you're saying we could still <laughs> we could still disparage her <laughs> thought process for thinking that. Yeah, it's just wild. I feel like she keeps both with like the Sandoval stuff and that um it just feels like you know, I'm willing to look at Ariana's life through a different lens than just the obvious like queen status, but like yeah. it's truly like how the fuck is that her problem? Like it's literally not. Ariana could have broken the NDA. <laughs> yeah, she's like, "Do you wish that I broke the NDA and told you directly?" But she could have. NDA, I mean, I mean, in NDA, you can still like ABC the mouse. You don't fuck with the mouse. Well, why you think? Well, I mean, I would never break an NDA, and I'm not saying that I ever, ever would. I love signing NDAs for any confidential things, but I'm just saying, yeah, I guess, I guess if, if, <laughs> I guess if she would have broken the NDA, then there's proof that she told Sheena before, you know, because it would be talked about. So you're right. Right. Um, and then she, <laughs> Sheena decided to follow that up with, what if, in a hypothetical scenario, just imagine a world, like just think like think into the future. What if one day I noticed that Sandoval had done all of this work on himself and I decided I wanted to be his friend again, like years in the future, just like you can't even imagine. It's like so far into the future. It's like sci-fi, like years, Blade Runner. Years from now. <laughs> years. We're talking maybe five years, <laughs> right? She's like, what would you think about that <laughs> like what are you asking well it's 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 what lala said directly to her she sheena didn't want to bring it up you know at the alley astrology party so now this is the first time sheena knows she has to ask ariana on camera the one question that she has the one thing she well two things sheena's wrestling with dancing with the stars and then hypothetically, what would happen? And Ariana, I, did you did you feel like me where Ariana was still a little vague as to what she would do? She said, yeah. I would give you a side eye, but not a side eye of disgust. It would be a side eye of you're in danger, girl. Yeah, which she deploys that quote again later, which I believe is from the movie Ghost. Oh, it is? Yeah, I think Whoopi Goldberg says that. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it just confirmed from uh, our producer. <laughs> That's from Ghost. You're in danger, girl. But- I think I think if Ariana is going to okay this is not I'm not I'm not this is fine to say I think if Ariana is going to say that friends whoever the friends are especially Sheena who is one of her best friends so that's real not just the the show I think she's one of her best friends I think she should be clear what would actually happen to Sheena if Sheena does say years from now or aka maybe the end of this season if she started to warm up to Sandoval, what would Ariana's true mm -hmm. decision be? Yeah. Because Sheena, this was sort of, um, I'd say, a wishy-washy mm -hmm. uh, end result. Yeah. And Sheena doesn't, that, I don't think that helped Sheena with this decision. <laughs> it's like when you, I don't know if you did this, but when I was growing up, if me and my friends wanted to have a sleepover, I'd always go to my mom and I'd be like, we were pondering, like, um, what if? Like, yeah. you're kind of like couching just like yeah getting a vibe check yeah, of course <laughs> so that was the vibe check that sheena was doing but ariana just said that she would just be worried for sheena to have that person in her life yeah because she still considers if sandoval could do this mm -hmm. thing under my watch this like despicable evil thing no one truly knows him yeah so she'd be worried for sheena yeah which i feel like is what she said about james too where it's not like it pisses me off personally that you are hanging out with him against my honor or whatever. It's more like, why would you do that to yourself? Right. Like, sounds, that's sad. But it sounds like Ariana isn't just saying, I, well, I don't know, is she saying, I will never be friends with you anymore? <sighs> I don't know. It sounds like it's just like, it will be a check mark against you in my mind kind of a thing. Right. Which I get. Yeah. Did you um, hear the little rumor that was bubbling up on Bravo and Cocktails about what happened at the reunion? No. That, so 
apparently it was kind of like boring. That's what they said, whatever the source was. Okay. But then all of a sudden there was a huge blowout fight between Lala and Ariana and they had to like extend filming because it like came out of nowhere. <gasps> and it's a friendship ender, they all said. Oh, wow. That's why Andy said, Katie, I was I was actually going to ask how you're doing with Lala after this reunion. And then he kind of <laughs> sipped his drink or whatever. So apparently I think Lala does something oh, or wow. there's something so horrendous that happens between ariana and lala that it's like game over for them and katie would have the you know what's that like get caught in the crossfire a little bit of okay. this like blowout between them wow well didn't andy say uh andy watched the final i think he said seven episodes right before the reunion yeah. which he was claiming are incredible um which we can decide whether or not to believe him um and he claimed his in his review that lala is the voice of reason. Yeah. He also said... And the comments were pissed. Yeah. He also said Brock is the voice of reason and Lala is the voice of reason, which makes me think, this is a theory, that they were riding hard for Sandoval and he thinks that Sandoval obviously should be welcomed back in the group. Like, mm -hmm. he doesn't have the same... He has an agenda. <laughs> he has an agenda and also he's not a, a staunch hater of Sandoval. He thinks that they should overcome this. So the fact that Brock and Lala might have been arguing for that, he says they're the voice of reason. Right. Yeah. A lot of the comments were like, Andy's a Sandoval sympathizer. Like, he couldn't be more wrong. Right. But, but what's, I mean, what's Andy supposed to do? Right. He's dealt with so much worse in the bravo universe like yeah he's not like gonna hate sandoval forever for, for cheating this. yeah for cheating <laughs> i mean on the cheater show yeah i mean i mean i mean like he can be disapproving and he probably was blown away for the first uh you know four months after and he did let people have an outlet to talk horrendous shit about sandoval yeah, for a really long time and watch what happens live raised ariana multiple times on the show like yeah but he's not i i don't think anyone expects andy to just be like anti sandoval for the rest of his life yeah i will say again i am not going to bat for this man at all but i forgot until they played the clip again today how brutal the reunion was oh yeah last season because oh yeah um i think it was when him and katie are talking and he's saying like i tried to apologize at the reunion or whatever and he's like so gaunt and like his mustache is like drooping down like he's like so <laughs> yeah. depleted and like weak and pale and looks like absolute shit he's crying he's being trying to be like i fucked up i'm sorry and everyone's like no one feels fucking sorry for you shut the fuck up we don't want to hear it and i was like oh my god I, yeah it's <laughs> jarring to like, see I the mean, violence it's yeah i mean it's jarring like they I were mean, basically like if they could they would have had him on the ground like kicking the shit out of him <laughs> <laughs> like just like I mean, beating we, him up i mean it's been a long time now but you and i both <laughs> i think we were still even shocked at the time i remember that was, well we were watching it every week at our viewing parties and everyone was like boo! it was like gladiator like everyone yeah. was like boo yeah. kill him yeah. fuck him and i remember being like i feel sick yeah i know i mean it, it's 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 rough to watch and they katie said um I'm, I'm bringing a lot of like um additional stuff up here but katie said it's a completely different vibe and andy said that they were allowed to actually talk about things in like a mannered way yeah the, a complete 180 from yeah which I think I'll prefer mm -hmm. just because as much as I loved everyone lighting him on fire to a degree, <laughs> it was not helpful and not, um, what's that? Like they couldn't get anything, get past anything or yeah. get through anything because there was just James and Lala screaming the entire time, interrupting. Yeah, they should have waited a little bit to film that. I think um, so too. Uh, do you want to go through this Belmont disaster where Tom keeps telling everyone he encounters that he needs to take a shit? Yeah. <laughs> Beep. Um, yeah. Well, no, you can say <laughs> shit. We officially uh, changed the rating on ACAST, so now we're R-rated. So I you mark say... on YouTube not for kids. Oh, good. Me too. Not suitable for children. <laughs> yeah. Who cares if we say shit? S-H-I-T. <laughs> so they don't explain the scene after... Um, after... Uh, <laughs> after the swan ride with Joe and, and Schwartz, yeah. then they don't explain it. There's no, there's no. Hey, should we get a drink at the Belmont? Right? I mean, yeah, are sorry we if uh, we got distracted by our sandwiches, but I swear. No, I swear. If, what if we, you and I, are both just looking down at our sandwich and we miss? Like, I'm going to go to the Belmont and I'm going to invite a lot of people. They're like, no. it's Jesse Montana's birthday. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like full ADR. Okay, no, no, no. I think there was no setup. All of a sudden, they just appear at the Belmont, and it's kind of weird because Schwartz and Sandoval are already there, and then the rest of the cast is already there. It looks they- like work drinks. Yes, yes. It's um, the Belmont is empty except for four extra people <laughs> in addition to the cast, and then I think within one second, Katie and Ariana just walk in. Yeah, and then Ariana has to justify why the fuck. Whoa, sorry, already. <laughs> she would ever, ever be at the Belmont at a party that they didn't even explain what's happening. She won't, she's never talked to him. I mean, she still doesn't, but. I think Alex Baskin said, get your asses over to the <laughs> Belmont right after this meeting and have a scene. Or, right now, or, or we're canceling this show midway through the season in full <laughs> disgrace. Because it was like, it made no sense. It, was, it, it wasn't an active, it was, well, what if people are like, they explained it, you morons. <laughs> we should like rewatch it really no, quick. No, I'm almost positive. We're wrong. That would be I mean, awful. even still. It, it's still, okay, well, if, if without the one second of explanation, it still did not make any sense. Yeah, and, and then, it seemed like no one knew yes, because then, they were all surprised to see her. Sandoval was surprised. Like everyone, she says, Katie dragged me here is what she says. Katie dragged me to the Belmont to go somewhere where Schwartz and Sandoval (laughs) were when they wouldn't even go on the, you know, Lake Tahoe trip to stay away from them. And then uh, Schwartz is like standing with Tom and he's like, can you not stand so close to me? I don't want Ariana to see. And then he's like, I'm just kidding. (laughs) And Sandoval goes, but you're not all the way kidding, are you? (laughs) And then he goes, can you, I guess what? Schwartz, I got a shit. It's like, I, I was like. They don't talk about <laughs> shitting on Vanderpump Rules. It's, it's like so gross. I mean, Jax, I guess, shit with the door open. Oh, that yeah. was as far as they went. And then James obviously used poo poo head. head. So they sort of allude to shit, but not in a scene at the Belmont does Sandoval ever say, "I got a shit." That and was it, such a weird, like, what did he? What was he trying he, to do? Do you think he had to shit? from nerves because he didn't know that ariana was coming because he he didn't know that alex baskin had an all hands meeting and made ariana and katie go to this well then go why are you telling everyone yeah and then he he makes a full meal out of going uh, on this (laughs) shit because (laughs) not those two (laughs) sentences Because Schwartz goes, it's the best poop bathroom in all of Hollywood. So I wonder if the Belmont liked that a little bit. I would say good to know, but I don't do that. Oh, (laughs) never in my life would I I don't even know what that is. Not even at the Belmont. Me neither. Um, And then Sandoval Casting, he goes, you see him go. He starts to pull his pants down. (laughs) He, like, he gets to the toilet seat. And then you hear the flushing noise. You hear, and then he comes out and he goes, sorry, Kyle Chan. Kyle Chan goes, I thought you left. He goes, no, man. Had to take a shit. It's like. (laughs) It's full circle from the flush in the trailer. Right. (laughs) But, like, uh, okay. Do you, (laughs) okay, here's, here's a theory. Do you think Sandoval was so thrown off his game that he didn't know what was happening here because this was such a sloppy scene and he didn't know that Ariana and Katie were coming that he had to call like, a, um, what's a safe word when you're filming when you want them to cut? Uh, yeah, like bravo, bravo, Bra- fucking it's, it's, bravo. This is his bravo. He's like, are you going to really keep me saying I have to take a shit in the middle of a party at the Belmont? Yeah, he was trying to go around sabotaging. Like he went to each group and was like, I got to take a shit. <laughs> And then not even not even the pre shit. He had to talk about it post shit. Yeah. I think this is his bravo bravo bravo. <laughs> and then and then Sheena, this was real. This gave me such secrets revealed, like mm-hmm. too sloppy to air. Yeah, this almost wouldn't even be secrets revealed. Sheena comes over and she's pretending like she has no conflict about talking to Sandoval in front of Ariana. Sheena's like, yeah. hey, you know what I mean? I know. Like since when? Yeah, she like went she up goes, to him. hey, yeah. And Ariana's like staring at her. So obviously, it, Ariana knows that Sheena is in a good enough place with Sandoval to have a two-on-one with her, her Schwartz and Sandoval. And then she goes, Hey, uh, just so you know, my advice is you got to apologize to Katie. (laughs) It's like, what? Yeah. Yeah. She's like, uh, trying to be like, I'm going to be the one to get him to handle this correctly. Um, so she's saying, yeah, he has to apologize to Katie. She, uh, also this whole time tom is drinking a beer and he drinks it in that weird fucked up way with his pointer finger yeah i'm doing it on the uh youtube right is, was it kind of like this it was like hooked he, around he does it backwards like and i'm yeah, like was, i would be so annoyed if someone i knew did that i'd be I, like can you chill i would think it was cool see <laughs> no but not because of him 
<laughs> not because of him. I meant if anybody did it. Beep. <laughs> Um, uh, okay, but yeah, so- you can tell that as she's giving him this advice, this unsolicited yeah. advice, he's getting more and more angry. But also, like, I just want to really go into it. It makes no sense. Katie is not the one that it's needs a to be moot. Yeah, does she? You that first of all, it's bad advice, <laughs> and it's bad advice. But also, it doesn't make any sense why Sheena is using this as an opportunity to tell Sandoval that Katie needs that apology. I mean, I guess right. because they're. They're, they had that rooftop dinner where Katie wanted to jump off the roof and right. he, she found out Katie's true feelings. But yeah. I don't, but that's not, that's not the work that needs to be done here no, at all. I mean, yeah, Katie hates his guts, always has, and now always will because yeah. she can. Yeah. Then also Sheena says, I heard you guys had a sexy singles pool party. Um, and Schwartz goes, that's exactly what I didn't want the rumor to be <laughs> about that thing. So that's more fodder for why he left because he didn't want to be associated with a single and ready to mingle Sandoval event. Right. Yeah. He said that the party was G rated, um, which it did appear to be. Uh, yeah, but but it was, but you could tell why Schwartz thought yeah. it was on the verge of orgiastic. Right. Uh, also, Sheena made a sort of, interesting comment that she said tom used to live on a moral high ground and then he would judge anyone that didn't fall within that and he basically lost the right to do that and i think he's like spiraling because he can't live there anymore i thought that was interesting that sheena said that yeah damn (laughs) props to sheena that that was very insightful and very good um did she also say something about raquel abandon you and is there a part of you she said (laughs) She said she she was kind of putting in the work there. She had like yeah. three different things to say. Yeah. She said also Raquel abandoned you. Is there a part of you that wants to just admit to yourself that you hurt this person really bad? Mm-hmm. Which you know that was good. And then at a certain point, uh, Sandoval goes, "Oh, he goes, I don't want to have this conversation. I just I got a shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to shit again." And then James goes, "Bro, bro, what are you doing, bro? You're ruining your life, bro." Wow, the levels are going crazy, bro. Bro, you're ruining your life, bro. You're burning every bridge. And it's like, James, what the hell are you doing Why here? Why do you care? <laughs> First He's of all, like, James, your life is crumbling, bro. It's like, where did James come from? Were you listening? You yeah. weren't even around. I it know. Was like, I this, was like, what? This was like a weird Alex Baskin intervention with Ariana there. <laughs> and it didn't feel right. Obviously. It felt like Ariana was already gone at this point. Yeah. Um, he, Tom's like, I've had enough of this. And he yeah. leaves. He goes, I'm filled to the brim with shit. And he goes, I'm not groveling anymore to anyone. And then he leaves the Belmont. Yeah. When? On foot. When in the world? Ever. To Sandoval leave a scene. especially Except Miami one has... girl. Oh. <laughs> he went running that day. Oh my God. That's the last time he ran was Miami girl. This was his Miami girl. He, I think he did not expect this scene and it was going so badly and weirdly. And also he was put off by Ariana being there that he said, no more for me. Because he yeah. never does that. Especially like, this is an opportunity for Sandoval to have the time of his life with all of these people. He could have gotten on the bar, stood up on the bar, yes. and said, I officially want to apologize to all of you. <laughs> especially Ariana. And then Ariana would have had to listen. Oh God, can you imagine? But you know what I mean? Yeah. He could have taken the opportunity to do that. But I feel like this was just... Instead, he took a shit. He took a shit. And I think once he had no more shit in him, he knew he had to leave. <laughs> I keep hearing that MacGruber, like, I'm going to shoot. <laughs> All right. I love that. Yeah, that's so sweet. So that was, <laughs> so that was, um, so that was a bad scene. Yes. And then we said that the pool party was sort of a bad scene and a weird scene. Yeah. And then Joan Schwartz was sort of a weird off kilter scene. Yeah. So, um, so there's a lot of kind of a, a mess a little bit. Yeah. Um, I feel like a good tail end of that is then Katie goes to hang out with Ariana and uh, when Ariana hears from Anne that Tom is coming downstairs, she runs away Yes, and Katie is left to intercept him, which I mean, obviously they were going to have a talk. That was sloppy though. Sure. That was very sloppy because they say... um, they, they Sandoval goes, oh, I guess I got to have a conversation with Katie. And then Anne texts Ariana, right, like you said. Yeah. But it's like the only reason they know this is going to happen because a producer said to Katie that Sandoval wants to have a conversation right. with you. It could have been like, uh, Ariana's not home yet. You can wait for her in the kitchen. Yeah. And then Tom comes down. But this is some sloppy um, producing. We're seeing the strings. And I never, yeah, and I never say this about the producers because I love them all, <laughs> each one of them. Jerry. What's <laughs> 
um, Alex, Alex Baskin. Baskin. <laughs> the people we saw at the the panel that we loved every oh, single yeah. one of them. They were so. I watched insightful. a video of one of the girls. Did you see that on TikTok? No. It was, um, it was like the younger one. Oh um, yeah. Sheena interviewed her for I don't know if it was for BravoTV.com or what, but I saw uh-huh. it on TikTok. Um, I never know. Isn't it weird? The world of content these days, I just watch shit and yeah. I have no idea where it's from or what it was for. Oh, yeah. And I just watch it anyways and no one gets paid and it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> um, but anyways, everyone in the comments was like talking shit about Sheena throughout. Oh, guys, come on. <laughs> Sheena doesn't deserve this. She gets hate every single season. She's just, um, when you watch it, it's funny because she interviews, it's a role reversal. Like, right. It's the producer doing a confessional kind of, and Ariana's producing her, and they show her as well. And she's like really good at it. Like yeah. Sheena's good at that kind she of is thing. She's a great interviewer. And you know, like she's like, answer me this way, like speak in a full sentence, like look at me, whatever. Yeah. And you know, it's like everyone gets pissed off, and I agree that it's funny, like her selfishness or like self-absorbed thing is funny. But I'm like, she's one of the most producer-brained. Yeah people ever yeah which was the episode speaking of content where you have no idea where it generated from where <laughs> what was the content where sheena said that in her confessionals she'll actively say things to remind viewers of flashbacks so that the producers <laughs> can wedge in flashbacks did you see that no she said that she brought up the dancing with the stars the backstage or when ariana was my backup dancer oh. she said that she will put in uh right. flashback uh I mean, that's you, yeah it's like, like they have call, their choice oh, i'm sorry call callbacks so that flashbacks can happen because she knows that people love flashbacks which yeah it's very that's a yeah. very producer minded way to sure think. i do feel like though it's a bad sign how many flashbacks we're getting this season like every episode yeah. has like three at least like montages of the past yeah and i'm like i get that you're trying to remind me of former dynamics but all it makes me think is that like it used to be better Right. No, totally. <laughs> if it was, if we were smooth sailing and everybody was loving life, we would not be having three flashbacks every yeah, episode. I mean, they always use it for humor for sure. But yeah. like this, it's more like, yeah, like a historical, like memories. Like it's not just like, yeah, it, you, it used to be more like Jack's lies and yeah. then it would show like the lies. And then this, it's like, remember when they all hung out? Like, yeah. remember when people were friends? Yeah. You're you're exactly right. They used to use it to call out someone like yeah. for something they said. Yeah. As evidence against them. Yeah. And now it just feels like they're like, no, like there really was something there. They did it to Ariana in last week's episode where they were like, Ariana's like, I don't get mad often. And then they show her screaming <laughs> oh, yeah. three times, but one of them was after Scandaval. <laughs> right. And the other two were like, not that bad. It's yeah. Like, Ariana doesn't scream that often. Right. I know. Sometimes you're like, eh. Yeah, but all we were going to say about the producers is that we love you so much. Obviously, you're the best people in the world. We love every minute of everything you've done. There's a little bit of sloppy producing. I don't know if your your field producers out there are missing some moments, but it didn't make any sense why Katie and Sandoval had that conversation. You didn't justify it well enough at all. Right. And then, so, I don't know, he comes in trying to, like, he's, like, smiling, like, hey like he's trying to be very Mm -hmm. nice to her she like will barely look at him um and then you know he basically starts apologizing right away he says that he he's sorry for how he acted while she was going through a divorce he knows she was going through a lot and she's clearly like not fucking down like she's like because it's weird it's like why also also this scene from you and i's rewatch of when Jax tried to apologize to katie about something about wanting schwartz to cheat on her actively she goes i know why you're doing this you just want to be <laughs> friends with me again this apology is half ass and it's coming out of nowhere and i don't accept your apology it's like this is the exact same energy she's like yeah she knows why people apologize apologize to her and she knows that sandoval would have never done this had sheena not prompted it and she knows he's only doing this to save his ass and to have scenes with her potentially so (laughs) i actually i think this was a great uh, impulse for katie to have yeah no it it means nothing and and sandoval should have known that this was like he shouldn't have listened to sheena Mm -hmm. this is this was always going to be the result with Katie. yeah it's also just like too late (laughs) <laughs> like yeah. it's just like uh like now it really seems forced um and she says apologies are just words and then she's like she's like you fucked up so bad like what you did and your affair she called it fathomless uh and he's like fathomless like you can't even fathom it <laughs> it's like yes tom yeah 
And we all we all laughed in the room when we watched that. That was like a laugh out loud moment. Like you can't even fathom this happening. It's like it was a good word, fathomless. Yeah. I like that. Um it ends what it kind of just uh lands like a thud and yeah. Katie will not forgive him. I liked Katie's remark that she said that she has like the least sympathy of anyone because she took the hard road to leave her husband. Like Yeah. Which isn't it like I feel like it's weird coming out of my mouth that they were actually married that like Schwartz was her husband like that just sounds weird to me but um, like she's like I did the hard work of ending the relationship I didn't yeah. fuck someone else I didn't cheat I like I left him in a yeah. clean way and I mean before the Rachel shit they were in a good place yeah. and could have and I think still are actually fine um, but she's like yeah like fuck you like I'm the one that actually did it the way you were supposed to do it. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that was good, actually. That was good. Yeah, you're right. Looking back on the past with Katie and Schwartz, it's like, <laughs> it's sad. I think she just talked, in this episode, she says, he just was never going to love me the way that I felt like I should be loved. Yeah, which is, like, which is true. Yeah, true and a very sad realization. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of Katie. Yeah. I mean, I, I really, I, I'm, I'm proud that she, I'm proud that she, realize that i mean that could have been 10 more years of this marriage yeah. and it was hard for her to do that i mean schwartz was her full 90 percent of her life i know they were together like 12 years i think she said yeah crazy um and then it cuts to um like a this was also a weird scene uh, Remind the me. toms <laughs> together in his room tom is like journaling okay yes okay. and it's like i don't even know how like it was, it was another sloppy scene. Yeah, like, how did we get here? Like, why is Schwartz there? Like, what? <laughs> Schwartz goes up into his room, and he goes, hey, just so you know, I've been journaling a lot. I've been really journaling. I've been journaling since April. So that was, <laughs> that was, um, that was, so it's been April, May, June, July. Yeah. So that's like the Scandival Diaries. Yeah. Don't you Put think? Put that BravoCon behind glass. Oh, wait. I'll like do you Like the Gutenberg one. Bible. I'll do you one better. <laughs> Sell that thing. You want some money, <laughs> Sandoval? It. The Sandoval Diaries? <laughs> the Scandoval Diaries? Yeah. If he sold his 200-page journal from April till July, yeah, that would be a big deal. Oh, my God. You would read. I mean, you'd read yeah. it, right? I know. I just got the vision of him writing a book that we would have to read. <laughs> I mean, I would I would just read this. Like, wouldn't that be the worst? Like, everyone would just have to, like, shrivel up and die because it would be a bestseller, unfortunately. You think it would. So you agree with me. Well, yeah, because people want the tea. And I thought people... I was just, I was, thought it was just, def like, somehow defending <laughs> Sandoval, but I think Although, it would be. maybe people would, maybe people hate him enough that they would boycott and would just <laughs> watch the excerpts on TikTok. I, yeah, but... yes. I'm sure that would happen, but... <laughs> wouldn't i mean just for i mean even though you hate him presumably <laughs> even though that's kind of parasocial for us to hate him you and i but i'm just saying you would i would want to know for posterity what it's the like, hell he was if thinking. i did it yeah it's right <laughs> OJ we read book. yeah yeah i He's love like, that oj if book. i did it i love that oj book I, we do am i do you agree with me that that would sell or do you think people would boycott it and people or people would hate him so much that they'd be like why would you ever buy his journals from Scandaval? <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, it would be like people would have to take the cover off and read it with like a book cover. Like we should. OK, <laughs> OK. See, you it, Sandoval, if you put out that diary, we'll create a fake cover that says like Ulysses by James Joyce or something with a bunch of a cool new cover. Yeah. Or Great Gatsby or whatever. Twilight. Twilight. <laughs> and anybody on the subway, you can read this for everybody. You yeah. can read it judgment free. Yeah. Anywhere you want. I actually, the reason I thought of that is because when I did read Twilight, I took the cover you off. You did? Yeah. <laughs> did it just have a hardcover with no embossment? I think it was at least like way more subtle because, you know, the cover is iconic with like the apple. Yeah. And I was like, I don't need people to be very obvious. Damn. I'm trying to think. I know I would do that like in a certain era, but I think, I don't know if I ever went to the full extent of taking the cover off a hardcover that I was reading because I was it embarrassed. It could be like the Twilight cover where he's holding an apple, but it's like white nail polish. And the apple Can is about like Rachel being like virginistic. Exactly right. That is a beautiful <laughs> cover i keep trying to think of alternate covers that we would use to put on his book in case you didn't want to be seen with it but i love that cover too 
I don't, okay. Oh yeah, that's a great <laughs> idea. And let's talk off mic about how we can implement that. Okay. So, but I definitely think Sandoval, if you want some money, publish that journal. Yeah. Not that I, I mean, need to Andy Cohen has an imprint. He could get it done. Oh my God, the Scandoval <laughs> Diaries. Um, okay, and then again, I, again, I have to say what I said last week. Sandoval needs the audience to know by everyone that him and Rachel's relationship is over because there's no one speaking for her side. Rachel will come out with her podcast and she'll say what was going on at this time. But as of for the audience of just Vanderpump Rules, he needs to make sure everyone knows it's over. Yeah. It's over. I am going to have a journey now away from Rachel. And I think all of these scenes are just letting everyone know, please, for the love of God, let me move on, even though you hate me, because Rachel was too powerful of a thing that happened last season for him to just not have many, many scenes Yeah, uh, saying that that relationship is officially over. I was dying to get eyes on. They blurred her um, and they just kind of showed them very fleetingly, but I'm... It felt so the photos of them that he said that he snuck away yeah. to like world's toughest test, I think is what he said. Yeah. Um, they felt like contraband because I was like, when did you take those? They, I mean, they, they were contraband. Like they, 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 they were. Where did on, you get them printed? They looked like film. Yeah. And he goes, look at how happy we were. And Rachel, like, I think were was those from out. like pre scandal Like, no, I mean, I think it was. Or like I, right after. It was like they were like in the day, weren't they? It was like bright and beautiful. But like, do you think that like they took and printed illicit photos of themselves as a couple during the seven months? Yeah, I think that so. That just seems so crazy. Maybe they were right after the reunion. How? Because <laughs> like she went away pretty quick. Right. It was like the day. No, she, it was like the day after. She had to like be taken out of the mental health facility to go to the reunion. No. I think, uh, what she, was it? She, she disappeared. Was, I she think. disappeared and went to the nail salon. Right. And they got that paparazzi video of her. Well, we need yeah, to do a, we, need we need the need... whiteboard timeline back because we... I'm starting to forget. Me but too. Um, no, I'm, that's the thing. I'm like, it was never a good time. It was either, I bet it they were... was probably just straight up during the affair and they're sickos and they just had like private yeah, little photos that they took. That's what I'm thinking. Because there was um, no good times. Once they were found out. Yeah, it would be almost to... worse if they took them after. Imagine if Ar when Ariana watches that scene of him crying over oh these photos God. of Rachel. It's like, when were those taken? Ugh. Are you crying over these this beautiful time know, you had during so our relationship? Yeah, and then he he like puts his head in like a like shoe box and like starts crying. And Sandoval goes, are you a little solid today? And then he goes, uh, what does is, what is Sandoval say? He goes, I'm not Scott Peterson. <laughs> yeah, he's like, treating me like I'm Scott Peterson. And Schwartz is like, you're not Scott Peterson. Didn't he kill his wife? Which innocent project uh, coming soon. He's out? Well, no, but they're reassessing. Why? They have apparently a smoking gun. Why did he dye his hair blonde and start driving like OJ away <laughs> to Mexico? I mean, you know what? Maybe he did it, but maybe, well, maybe he did it. I have no idea, but I don't think the Innocence Project would take a risk if they didn't have a good, you know, new option. Well, I just, I just have to say, I mean, why, I mean, if you're innocent, you don't <laughs> gone girl yourself and say, like if Ben Affleck would have run and dyed yeah. his hair blonde yeah. in that movie, everyone was suspected he did it. You just, it's just what you don't do. Sure. But did they have evidence beyond a reasonable doubt? Wait, so we want him to be innocent <laughs> knowing. Well, I'm just saying if you don't have evidence, you can't convict someone. They had no evidence? They were just like, he's a dirtbag, right? And everyone was like, yep. Oh my God. Well, let's watch. Can, will you and I watch the Scott Peterson documentary one day? Because I yeah. don't really know. It, was it convinced me that he was innocent. It did? Yeah. The Scott Peters, so you think he's innocent? You know he died. I don't remember blonde. why. I just remember coming away from being like, I need more info. You know what I had that about? What was the one? I'm sorry, you guys. Now I'm going to be like a Sandoval no, defender no, no, no. and a no. Scott Peterson defender. No, we have defender. beers. We have we have alcohol. <laughs> We're having fun. This is the first turtle time we've ever done after hours. We everything that we say it should be what's that called? Um, we can't get this is allowed. This. <laughs> 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 okay you guys if you watched it i think it was on was a and e maybe or something yeah. it was like three years ago you know, or I something and i just remember there's something about he was like at his computer at work or like at the dock or something like that and like i don't know there was just like big gaping holes in the case okay can i guarantee you something <laughs> if i watch that any &E documentary with you and i think he's innocent too he's absolutely innocent <laughs> i promise the judge will turn to us 
And, and now rise the honorable <laughs> turtle time. You both watch the A and E documentary and declare him officially innocent. Is that true? They're like a jury yes. of his peers. It's just us. Yes, your honor. Um, you know who I felt that about it was Amanda Knox. Okay. I was like, I was like, Amanda Knox is innocent as hell. You didn't think she took a doo doo in the toilet? No. Some, uh, no offense, but some vagrant came into that Sandoval. house. Sandoval. Sandoval had to take it. No, come on. You can't accuse him of the Amanda Knox murder. Um, I just felt like it, that was, I, I came away fully innocent. But I know people who watched the Amanda Do- Knox documentary and said, guilty as hell. Because she's weird. Yeah, but it's like, you're allowed to be weird. Exactly. So you think is... Okay, all right, we gotta go, we gotta go. Um, okay, uh, Jax. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, uh, Schwartz goes, you're not Scott Peterson. Why don't you need to be around a jury of your peers? <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, he's like, you need to break that Ruckhouse spell. And then it's implied that this is when we get the hint that Jax is going to get called Again, in. absolutely ham-fisted, shitty uh, producer finger. I mean... Schwartz is like doing a bad job of being like, how the hell am I supposed to introduce Jax for his for his um, spinoff show? Yeah. Say that he needs a jury of his peers to <laughs> talk to him again. It's like, there's yeah. a lot of mess in this episode. Yeah. Um, then Ariana has her little um, at-home game party. Um, what happened to that? Uh, they the play that game. The producers um, took a Never Have I Ever and <laughs> left them with seven questions that dealt with... <laughs> Things that Vanderpump Themes. Rules have dealt with. They had a Graham question. They had a threesome question. And they had a cheating question. Yeah. It's like, this was like, this episode was like producer scramble. Yeah. This was like, for the love of God, what's going on? This is like, let's all rally around and try to fix what's going on with this season. Yeah. I did enjoy that they reminded us that Sheena apparently was involved in an orgy with John Mayer. Wow. Yeah. She said it straight up. Like, she- what year? You know, I think it was in the era where <laughs> she was having sex with that bartender that she talked about too at, okay. on last episode. I mean, like we, ten years ago. But so she said, "Are you allowed to say that, like, if I had made love to a celebrity in the past and we had had an orgy, You're am like, I allowed to? Say, I hit it, baby, one more time. Yeah, for am example. I allowed, right? Yeah, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, really? Yeah. Oh wow! So you can't you can implicate <laughs> someone in an orgy that you had with them, no matter what, if you didn't sign an NDA. I mean, I think yeah, you through pun through pundum, I think you're pretty safe. Okay, but that was pretty heavy handed. It was okay, um, and then we see a Jackson Schwartz text. Um, Allie and Joe have their little meetup. I, you know. That was, that was just, that was Allie being very nice. Allie needs to get a lot of credit for being really nice. She, they, Schwartz must have said, Joe wants a scene. Will you please film one with her? Allie, you could be the bridge to possibly her coming into this group on this show. Allie said yes. Mm -hmm. And they talk about how she has the most friendship vibes or whatever with, Schwartz, but friends, like we said, friends sometimes can become lovers. Yeah. And that was it. And uh, she reminded us that um, Katie did call her a crackhead in a tech, uh, tweet. Yeah. And she said her mom called her up and said, Have you been doing crack, Joe? <laughs> right. I always forget that uh, Katie uses all the, the language in her toolbox uh, oh, when yeah. she comes after somebody. Yeah. Um, okay. Then we do get a jack's old times montage or like back with the boys montage right um jack's walks the shot is like shoulders down you just see him walking through tom tom it's awesome and he's like all in black and literally when he walks in every head turns in the entire restaurant it was really giving bad to the bone like if you had different (laughs) music on that yeah it was was giving like like, tombstone yeah 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 they should have had western western whistling or whatever go Every single person turns, has a shocked face. Everyone has to watch that scene again. If you look at the background, it's awesome. No one expected Jax to come. Imagine, I wish we would have been there. Yeah. That would have been a scene to be a part of. Um, And then he goes into the private room. He says, well, well, well. He said, well, well, well. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. Sandoval looks pissed because he's like, I fucking hate this guy. Because, because Jax has been i was i was listening to when reality hits when reality hits was basically started after scandoval yeah and he Jax was just going in on scandoval yeah. calling him um what, what like all the things that he said he said you've been talking yeah. shit about me 
uh, on your podcast all the time. Yeah. Um, and, but they're like, how have you been? And he's like, you know, raising a kid, living my life. And he goes, my kid's growing like a weed. And I'm like, that that's a classic. Uh, Jack's just pulling a like copyrighted uh, phrase from the ether. Right. Just like meaningless. <laughs> um, growing like a weed. Yeah. And then he's like, I'm starting a, a restaurant or like a bar called Jax's. And then uh, Brock's like, well, if you need advice from anybody who started a bar and restaurant, these guys right here. And he says, no offense, but you guys are the last ones I want advice from, which is like extremely rude. Rude. Yeah. It's one of those things you don't say when you're in the company of people who have started a bar. Rude to Schwartz too. Yeah. And um, also then uh, Sandoval says, Jax has always had a thing where he has been jealous of me. And uh, Sandoval has been lying a lot, but he's not lying about that. If you, <laughs> I've watched Vanderpump Rules a lot of times. Jax is particularly jealous of anything that Sandoval gets and Schwartz. Yeah. He really is not a well-wisher. No. Um, yeah, he said uh, nothing brings Jax more joy than celebrating other people's failures, which I would say is true. I think so too. It, that we there's a word for that, right? Fraden, sh- uh, Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. Yeah, he has. A, <laughs> I think Jax has a big case of Schadenfreude. Yeah, and then um, Jax does another low blow, where he's like, "Well, man, uh, you look like you're looking better." Because gotta say, before you were looking like you were 50 years old. You look like absolute trash, yeah. but you look better now. And it's like, all right, thanks, dude. <laughs> but then there's no yeah. But then he keeps going because no one is um asking him any questions or saying anything else so he goes but then you got that white nail polish you need to take that off buddy anyway i've been hearing about what's going on in the world i can't help but notice what's been happening it's like they let jacks just have like a monologue because no one wants to interrupt him or talk to him yeah he just keeps talking he's like you need to humble yourself man like you need to like get forgiveness for what you've done you need to and then uh he's like tom's like i am i have and he's like you don't think you need to humble yourself and he's like I don't need to humble myself to you. Like you don't deserve it. Why do you like, why do I care what you think? And then that's, that sets Jax back on his heels. He goes, I know, I know I'm no better. I'm no different. And I don't really care about what you actually did, but the way you did it, man, don't you have some, uh, what did he say? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, <you> some... <laughs> um, empathy. <laughs> yeah, you have some empathy? But he like... said, Jack says, Tom, he says, you're, you are me seven years ago. Yeah. And he's like, my life is the best it's ever been. And you're a disgrace. <laughs> yeah. It, he says, uh, Sandoval is a disgrace. <laughs> I, I think that was a, a um, Jack's getting he- very heated and yeah. just saying all the old things that used to come out of his yeah. mouth. I mean, disgrace. so classic to say he's happier than he's ever been. Like yeah. even though like every minute of his life has been an absolute disaster. Totally. <laughs> um, what did you, James sort of just lets uh, everyone else have this scene? Yeah, he doesn't really talk. Huh? Yeah, he doesn't say. I anything. forgot he was there. I know he's just in the corner the entire time. Um, do you think? like me, that it is absolutely ridiculous for Jax to offer any moral (laughs) advice to Sandoval at all, or the fact that Sandoval would be um, pissed that he would have to eat shit in front of (laughs) Jax for any reason after what Jax has done. That's the thing. That's why he does need to be in the mix again, because he needs to be humbled back into the realm of where he's fucking up constantly. Jax does. Yeah, he's yes. like riding in hot, thinking yes. he couldn't make a mistake in this world because yeah. it's been a while for him yeah. as, like doing it publicly. And I know the consensus was like, everyone was like, yeah, Jax, tear him up. You're killing it, Jax. <laughs> but I swear, Jax would have been the first one that Sandoval turned to after, and Jax would have embraced him with open arms if Jax was still on the show. There's yeah. no way Jax would have had this high-handed moral high ground had he been on the show the entire time right well yeah because tom's like uh he's like you've been doing nothing but talk shit about me you can't stop talking about it and he's like everyone on earth is talking shit about you and he's like yeah uh when that happened to you i didn't double down and he's like yes you did and i'm trying to think of what he means by that no no jacks always thought that sandoval was like his worst enemy sandoval told everyone when that 
Faith recording came out, Sandoval got mad at Ariana and everyone for playing oh, right. it at the thing. He wasn't trying to delight in Jax's yeah, misery. Yeah, that's true. He got in like a huge fight with Ariana about that. Jax hates, and he did bring up the pastor shit, the Britney and Jax pastor. Right. Thing. He tried to have a conversation with Jax on camera about that. Jax got really pissed. That was when yeah. Britney was like, I'm going to punch Sandoval in the face. He got disinvited from the wedding. Yeah. Um. But yeah, then all of a sudden, uh, Jax decides to change his tune because he knows this needs to end on, on a hug. He knows he came in hot yeah he says he he says i'm sorry it's been two years <laughs> and i was boiling up and i had a lot to say and and he's like for god's sakes i have a tattoo of your name on it and they're like we thought you covered that up and he's like nope and it's tom tom and i yeah. which i forgot like i remember i think he shows it to them where they're like sitting in a pool or something and he yeah. reveals it to them but i didn't remember that's what it said i would love to know really like because on Vanderpump Rules, it was uh, discussed how Jack started to hate Sandoval. But I feel like they they like really didn't elaborate enough because it was just part of the season and not a huge part. But like I want to know really what happened between Sandoval and, and Jax. Right. Because he went from like his number one best friend tattooed to like not being invited to his wedding at all. Right. Like, I don't really remember how they got, it got so bad between them. But now, right. like you said... Like, Jax is back. Like, all three of them are partying together and hanging out all the time. Right. Um, and then, yeah, he is trying to gain some sympathy, I guess. He goes, I had the best job in the world at Vanderpump Rules, and I fucked it up. He's like, I felt like I lost it all. Like, we were, you know, it was rough money-wise. My wife was pregnant at the time, so I'm like, are we supposed to feel bad for him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he goes, my ego got the best of me. I was flying too close to the sun. And then they play that like fourth wall break wild scene that's still so wild to watch yeah. where Jax is screaming and ranting <laughs> and he screams at Lisa, this is why my show is so successful. And Lisa <laughs> goes, your show, it's my show actually, which is like so yeah. crazy to watch. And then it says, and and they, they left it ambiguous, but... They, the fact that they're including in the edit that he was fired mm -hmm. means that I think that's the official Bravo position, that Jax right. was fired. Do I think that was left. word from Lisa. Like she was like, I'm done. I think so. I mean, because so he, I always thought Jax left the show because he thought him and Brittany would get a TLC show or something <laughs> and they didn't renew his contract enough and they weren't going to pay him enough. So he left the show out of like being indignant yeah. and they let him say whatever story he wanted. But if they're including in the edit a headline that said Jax Taylor fired, I feel like they want us to know that was the case. And right. Maybe it was Lisa. And maybe Lisa is the one who's been keeping Jax off. Yeah. I mean, she might just hate his guts. Um, but yeah, we already, you know, basically talked about, he says, you know, he gives Tom a hug. He says that he's got to go because he's a family man. Um, he says, I was a runaway train for a long time. And then it makes the transition. He gets in the car. He says, fuck, I wish that I could be out doing shots with Tom Schwartz right now, drinking. But then he gets on a train. <laughs> choo choo <laughs> i was a runaway train <laughs> um and yeah then it makes the transition uh to the new show which uh i don't remember exactly what the intro like line is but kristen's like the concrete jungle is tough like I'm done with that life. And we discussed, I'm like, I'm pretty sure the concrete jungle is New York City. And they keep showing Tom Tom as concrete or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know why they let her keep that in. Also, um, such a brutal transition to be on the show about being older and to have a wrist brace. Oh, you know what? I didn't notice her wrist brace. She wore you know it the whole said, episode. Oh, I don't I was thinking I was writing notes. <laughs> is she she got hurt? It just is giving like carpal tunnel. Like it's giving like my body is failing me. Oh, that's so sad. Well, before <laughs> we, I, okay. So we, we talked a lot about that episode of Vanderpump yeah. Rules more than I even thought. Um, do you want to take a, a break before the Valley? Or are we going to do general thoughts about the Valley or what do you, how do you want to play it? I could do general because if I'm honest, I have a very hard Tom, a very hard Tom <laughs> time keeping their names differentiated i can help you with that okay there's jesse and michelle who are currently not together anymore but they are in a relationship jesse's, realtors jesse's a realtor they live by the chateau marmont okay they have one child and jesse really is not a good father it seems like yeah or he was not a good father up to a point and michelle hates him and resents him and they are already having a bad marriage that Danny, interests me that me they're too. already separated that keeps me one me foot too. in and i actually thought jesse had very good 
stinker guy energy where I thought he was charismatic and fun, but he's obviously, you know, he's a shitty, could be a shitty person potentially. There's a lot of like ground to cover with yeah. that person and the fact that their relationship ends up uh, in the toilet. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, immediately Kristen has a wrist brace. Brittany has a lipo yeah. headband wrap. She admitted thing. that she wanted to get her turkey gobbler, that's what she said, <laughs> done before, but she must have not had the timing right or, or filming must have happened two weeks <laughs> earlier or something. So it was not, she didn't want that to happen. Brutal. Yeah, that was sad that they decided to just like, <laughs> yeah, we're filming anyway, Brittany. So sorry that you, you know, did plastic surgery. Um, um, yeah, they did a little montage. Well, then there's of Danny a... and Nia. They, they oh, have yeah. three children. Uh, yes. And Danny is the one who said, one children is one, two is <laughs> three and three is six <laughs> that just boggled my mind <laughs> and then he's a voice actor and he's an actor he seems okay but unfortunately danny was the one who kept going three under two three under two <laughs> he, he was he kept screaming at the pool party or the country fair party he kept screaming that he has three children yeah. under two for some reason it's and like Jax you goes, did that and Jax goes he always says this i don't feel bad for him why does he keep screaming three under two yeah and then there's um uh oh boy jesse and jordan or janet and jordan jordan yeah. is the lawyer but he's not really a lawyer is he's, it? he's not remember he's a corporate his name is jordan oh d i think i wrote it down wrong okay that's okay well, well oh, jason. jason and janet jason and janet and janet is a friend of sheena's she's the one who sheena said i stopped being friends with her because she wanted to have a threesome with Dana and Max at one point, oh, I God. guess before she met Jason. Jason seems actually nice, and that's who Jax actually likes of these these guys. He runs to him a lot for advice because he's like a he's not a lawyer, but he's like a workers comp corporate attorney oh, or something. Oh, right, yeah, they explained it that like he basically defends corporations against their workforce. Yes, when they are like, I fell off a ladder and almost died, then he's like, you get nothing. He goes, did you have Vaseline on the bottom of your shoes or did you step <laughs> in? You were asking for it. Yeah. Um, um, and then there's and then there's Zach and Jasmine, who I believe are friends of at this point. OK. Um, I also just wanted to we already talked about it last week that Kristen briefly owned a home in the valley. Her ex urged her to sell it. They moved in together and then they broke up. So she no longer has a house. So, so did you say, OK, so you just heard that for the first time. Did that mean that Alex, that's her ex-boyfriend, did he have a house? And he said, you can move in with me to my house. Like she didn't, yeah. she did sell her house to move into his yeah, apartment. Why did she rent it? Not to advocate being a landlord or whatever, but like if you're not it, like getting married or you don't have any contracts, Kristen like gets to be a he, landlord. Yeah. If you like own it, you're going to move in with your boyfriend and like not sure what's going to happen. Like just Kristen, rent it out in the meantime. Kristen, you've got the turtle time seal of approval. <laughs> you get to be a landlord. We don't certified have, turtle landlord. Certified turtle landlord. We don't do this often. We don't like landlords. <laughs> I don't personally like my landlord, but you could be a landlord if you wanted. I think I love landlords. I have an application out in the wild. And if you sign <gasps> it, landlord, I will love it. <laughs> we love landlords now no you're right i i love they that do for so you. much for us i yeah i they love fix the, stuff for I, free I, what was i saying about not liking landlords i love them and, um, um but i just had to point out that i was screaming i'm sorry you guys i'm not being a snob i know we all need to live within our means and that means sometimes like you live in an apartment building whatever that's fine but i just to go from like owning a house to going to live in a multi what seems like hundred yeah. plus unit apartment building that has carpeting i'm like that bumps me the fuck out with the, the wrist brace yeah. and then it was revealed on watch what happens live that i think katie said that she lives down the hall so i think she just moved into katie's building and then lala lives in a building like yeah. that too and i'm just like why are they all moving into these like schwartz lives in a building like that and i'm like yeah. No wonder Sandoval doesn't want to fucking move out of his house because he knows he's going to have to move into a valley like place where he'll have to go to the lobby and beep in and take an elevator. Yeah, I think they're like I think they're used to the like they like the convenience of those places with door people and, and elevators. It's not and like New York, those. though. Yeah, like I, I understand I, in New York, you have a doorman and like live in a high rise or whatever. But in L.A., it's the same impulse that made them all buy the farmhouses. <laughs> it's like it's the same impulse. Like, yeah. it's just like. Someone recommended this one. Let's go in this. And like, you know what I mean? It's I do just, like that uh, Jesse is like, we don't fucking live in the valley. We live in the hills. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's how um, Stassi was too, where she's like, no, no, no. Yeah. 
I would love to live near the Chateau Marmont like them. Yeah, just walk on down. Do you think, did Jesse and Michelle seem like they were actually rich? Not that it matters. He seemed, when I watched their, on the after show, I think, he seemed quite, maybe he's full of total bullshit, I don't know, but he seemed quite confident that he is a, he said he was a luxury Okay. Realtor. All right. C- can I say what the through line of this whole episode was to like save us time of like all of the scenes dedicated to, to it? To confuse me with people that look the same? No. Okay. Well, I-, I think because I've had a little more time with them, you will come to learn who they are. You really will. Except I think Nia and Michelle and who's that? I think Nia I'm and like, Michelle. I'm like, there's one up- that's pregnant. Nia and there's Michelle- one that just had twins. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're going to, I I already am sort of starting to separate them and know them i think you will in another episode so don't worry about that but uh they this whole episode for me they are trying to make a huge storyline that Kristen is trying to get pregnant with luke's yes with her child seed. with luke's <laughs> seed and Jax won't shut up about it yeah he's telling anybody who will listen how bad of an idea he thinks this is yeah which and is it, classic Jax. yeah it is it, it is I, but it's I, yeah, you're right, I guess. But I, 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 it felt to me so much of like, Jack seems a little rusty in the storyline mm-hmm. department and he was just like overdoing it. Mm-hmm. He was telling everybody in yeah. every single scene that he thinks this is so odd or whatever, which, yeah, I, I don't know. I get, he was like, Kristen's my sister, so I have right. to talk about this. Right. But I just thought, I don't know. It's like of all the like things to like really harp on for Jax, I thought it was a little right. weird to make the pilot or premiere episode of this series about that. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure he'll step in it soon enough and it'll become about him. Yeah. Um, but something that made us howl was they showed that Jasmine used to work at Sir, And to prove that, they showed her like in a uniform. And she clearly is posing for a photo with Peter. And he's blurred. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah, I'm. Al- we're almost a hundred percent positive it's a photo with Peter, and Peter <laughs> must have said, "Pay me, or else you can't use my photo or something." Or that he just forgot to sign the appearance release or something. They just didn't have one on file. But the fact that Peter needed to be blurred for the valley is is kind of wild. Didn't we say again? I me- can never recall what we say on mic or off, but that like. Peter was basically asked to do the season for free. Like he was just like, uh, where did I hear this? It was like, well, well, he, well here. So, he, so he, his episodic rate yeah. is so high that now if he even pops in for an episode, he gets like 40 grand. I'm, right. I'm just saying a hypothetical number, yeah. but it's high. So and it's so, like not worth it. Yeah. So if Peter so like, not, stay the fuck out. Yeah. So if Peter's not going to have an active storyline, <laughs> like dating Rachel and then being broken up with by Rachel in season 10, if he's not getting the money worth his, like their money's worth out of him, they're not going to pay him for any right. episode. He's like bound by his legacy. Yeah. So it's like, even if they film at Sir, they have to do it when he's not there. Cause otherwise filming at Sir costs, Cost them so much more per day. Yeah, there hasn't been a, a little <laughs> peak of Peter, right? Sad. This season. No, I don't He's think so. He's too expensive. Wow, it's expensive to be me. Yeah, Peter, you got it. He he'll, he would go on turtle time in two seconds. Is it getting? <laughs> do they not want to pay you your episodic fee, and that's why they can't show you on the valley or? Uh, yeah, Vanderpump get him on the rules? valley. Come on. That would I would love of, a familiar face. Me too. <laughs> but okay, but let's talk generally because we are we're getting into the the thick of it. But um, yeah, like. I know it was a little confusing because we don't know. There's a lot of kids. We don't yeah. know these people. A lot of couples. It's kind of an unwieldy cast. Yeah, I think but- that's why. I think I have like a a bias, like a generalization bias around like kids and families because I'm just like, it's the one with the kids. It's the one with the family. And then when they all have some version of that, I'm like, I don't know who's who. Yeah, there were a <laughs> lot of, in one scene, I mean, in the final scene, there were like, nine different babies but in that one scene where britney comes over to i think nia's yeah. house there were seven children in that house i became very confused and like one person was pregnant one person had like was holding one baby on one arm and had another one in a little yeah wrap. asher isabella and then there was the two babies that nia had three under two <laughs> anyway there was a lot of there was it was um it was a little bit It was a little bit confusing to add that many new cast members along with Jax and Brittany and Kristen all in one episode. It was, it it kind of was like, it was too much to take in. I need them to wear, you know, when like you get like a litter of kittens or puppies, you have them wear like 
a blue band, like a collar yeah. or like a red collar. Like I need them to wear like a little yes. party hat so I could be like the red one uh, cheated. <laughs> you know what? I, I It's probably not too late for <laughs> editors to go in for the rest of the season and put colored like bands. They could just draw them on so we know which little kid it is. Asher. Yeah. Um, you know what they should have done? Not to give them advice, but they should have had the first 30 minutes be dedicated to Jackson, Brittany, and Kristen and mm-hmm. had them film five scenes together with Luke and then started to slowly drip in the other yeah. cast members and make it a little more organic like Jax hosts a party and he goes obviously Kristen you're invited you're here all the time yeah but then I'm gonna invite my friends Danny and Nia because they they introduced everyone at the yeah. start and it's half- like on housewives sometimes you don't meet the new housewives till like two or three episodes in yeah which this, is fine yeah we, we like who would have been mad if most of the first episode was just Jax Brittany and Kristen talking yeah. about everything they've done yeah and like they also gave us Lala and Sheena and Brock, I guess, just to ease our transition. But it was like already too much at that point. Yeah. Um, another through line is that Jax does not know Luke very well. And he's been very rude oh, to right. him where he won't acknowledge him at any events they go to. He just like will not put in the effort to befriend. Yeah. Kristen's apparently all the guys boyfriend. are kind of mean to that guy. Yeah. And they're all like, uh, Jesse's like, you can tell Jax hates Luke. Uh, Jason, the lawyer, not lawyer, says um, Luke is very introverted. It's hard to get to know him. They're almost like making him like a punching bag. Yeah. And Brittany says that she feels very in between. Like apparently when Luke and Kristen were at Sheena's wedding, uh, Jax like wouldn't talk to him at all. And she feels very uncomfortable with the whole situation. I'm like, why does he hate him so much? I mean, I guess partially because he lives in Colorado and he's like, why? I mean, I don't know why Jax gives a shit, but he's like, you guys are going to try and have a kid and you don't even live here. He thinks, and he just won't say, or maybe he even does say it. He's like, he thinks there's just such a huge chance that Luke and Kristen don't work out. Yeah. So he's, say, he's saying, Kristen, you're basically going to be a single mother with your right. child. If- I mean, I will say I'm never the person that would say leave LA. Like I'm like Angelino ride or die, like never leaving. Yeah. But I'm like, if you want to have a baby with this guy and you said he has 40 acres in a beautiful state and you live in an apartment building with carpet, like, why don't you just move to Colorado? Like what is here for you? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, in her defense, I mean her whole life and, and the Valley, but I don't think that she, I mean, she could go to Colorado for like nine months of the year. If yeah. she still wanted to film. Yeah. The Valley. I mean, I think it's more likely now. Be a don't snow bunny. That, yeah. Don't you think Luke is probably going to come here, right? If the Valley Continues. It's a true uh, Paige and Craig conundrum. Yeah, it's true. Did you, so overall, like if we're, I don't know how like deep, we're, I want to talk about the pool party, but like, yeah. did you, did you like the Valley or was it just too confusing up front? <laughs> did you enjoy that first episode? Um, I didn't not enjoy it, but yeah, I found it very overwhelming. Um, and I like literally couldn't keep people straight. Like that's a problem of mine. Like it's going to take me a really long time to learn their names and shit. Um, but I think as it gets messier and once Jax has to be in the hot seat more, I think that'll be more interesting. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, the pool party was just kind of chaotic. Yeah. It was, it, there was too much going on. It was like, there's too many cast members to focus on. Jax is ranting about Kristen's, you know, the, the storyline for the episode, which is Kristen's, um, you know, wanting to get pregnant. He's he's screaming. Brock and Sheen and Lala are there. They try to have little quick minutes with Jax, but those are like for one second. It's like way too much. There's permanent tattoos going on <laughs> at a country fair. Would you get one? Party? If I got invited to <laughs> Jax and Brittany's country fair, absolutely I would have gotten a tattoo. Would you get a Bubba that. tat? I would have gotten a little turtle. Oh, cute. Well, we would have been in the thick of turtle time back we then. We should set a goal that like... When we make our first million, <laughs> we get turtle tats that like wear, are wearing a little top hat and oh, a monocle. You heard it here first, little turtle cutie. <laughs> when you see a gigantic tattoo of a turtle in a top hat with a monocle, well, you I was know... thinking gigantic. <laughs> oh, what'd you say? Oh, no, not, not a gigantic. I, you're going to get it like the Ben Affleck Phoenix. I'm... When you see that Amy and I have a gigantic <laughs> turtle with a top hat and a monocle, you know that we just became millionaires. <laughs> We're shaking hands. Um, okay, but I want to talk about the pool party. The funniest moment, uh, not funny, but sort of you like call it funny. shocking. It was funny as a viewer. It's not funny for Danny. 
But at a certain point in the pool party, they knew that it was too chaotic and they wanted to have wild energy. And Brock goes, pull down Danny's pants. And Jax goes, okay. <laughs> and Jax goes down on his arms and he pulls Danny's bathing suit down. <laughs> Danny is fully naked under his bathing suit. And yeah, his top was long though. Yeah. <laughs> He, he, this is not funny. He was it is facing funny. out. Yeah, I mean, it, it's only funny because of how horrible of a prank it was. Because he's at a children's at his own party at Jax's own house. Like he knew what kind of a party it was. He pants a grown man in front of like a dozen toddlers. <laughs> and then Nia, I wish they were all like. Ah! We should add in screams <laughs> to that scene. Silence and screams. It was like like I running. I almost can't believe that they kept in that scene. His Is wife that, runs crying. Nia goes, his whole fucking penis was out. She she goes into the room where like the like tiny newborn babies are and she goes, It's so wrong. And then Jax goes, I'm sorry, man. I thought you were wearing shorts. I thought you'd have underwear. He goes, he goes, Who wears underwear? I, under their I bathing know, he goes, suit Danny goes it's a bathing suit man <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like it is not the a worst. single person laughs <laughs>, no, it is like the worst prank and it's the only truly like adulthood yeah. personified like <laughs> it, obviously in the Vanderpump days that'd be freaking hilarious like <laughs> he could do so much worse it wouldn't fucking matter and then now he's trying to pull that shit at a party where there's like newborn twins like being breastfed and everyone's like I'm calling the police <laughs> I, mean, I almost think like filming could have stopped at that point. And then Nia, yeah, she goes into the room and she's just crying. She's so upset. And then she has to justify why she's crying. It's like, I kind it's of also understand. It's also Brock's fault. <laughs> yeah, Brock, Brock thought. <laughs> well, it's, it's Jax's fault for being impressionable and succumbing to peer pressure. It's Brock's fault for suggesting it. And then it's no one else's fault. His wife said, my heart is racing. <laughs> it's also like, it's their first time on a show and her husband's... <laughs> Penis just popped out <laughs> at a party. Um, again, I'm like in this moment, I don't remember which man that was. That's Danny. You see the actor. That's it. That's the one who kept going three hundred two. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. They uh, the show that he makes like zombie sounds for a living. Yeah. Do we um, have to? We have to. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. Um, we won't yeah, be... it's really all just about uh, Jack's. Uh, you know, another disgusting thing he says at a child's party is that Kristen says. <laughs> Um, that he's like questioning if she's ready to have a kid and she's like how dare you of course and she's like I said I was ready with my ex but she's like I was but not with him right. and he goes no 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 <laughs> there's literally like, kids running by they're like at Chuck E. Cheese and he goes you sat right there and said I want him to come inside me right now you see there's kids playing pin the tail on the donkey <laughs> behind him <It's> like- <laughs> everyone's screaming they're like mommy what <laughs> oh man um, it, was, it was truly like it was the vanderpump rules aesthetic wedged into an adult seeming show you know where they're all supposed to be grown up around children yeah it was like it's really like jack's acclimating to a new environment where he can't do anything horrendous yeah. anymore and there was a glimpse of jesse potentially being like very messy like yeah. he gave kristen sort of <gasps> pinched his nip and then he pinched hers back which was insane oh yeah and she goes in no world should this man that i barely tolerate be even coming close to my breast that was wild too yeah and then he makes some weird joke that lala is his mistress for some reason it, like yeah. does not hit he, he has chaotic um dark energy yeah and then his uh, wife who hates him is like do you want to go check on our daughter in the other room and he goes nope yeah and he admits that he was like not a good dad for the first you know few years or whatever and like yeah she actively hates him so yeah so i'm excited to watch that that's the thing i'm like i need the drama i'm like if if it's going to be family oriented i need i'm sorry but i need the families to be you know crumbling yeah sure i hate to say it yeah <laughs> if you if you're gonna watch a family drama it better crumble into pieces like in john and kate plus eight did that that cr- crumbled? Oh man, they did not get along. John and Kate. And now he DJs at like Chili's. John <laughs> from John and Kate plus eight DJs at Chili's now. What's his last name? Goslin. Yep. John Goslin. Mm-hmm. Wow, I never watched that show too much. I was um, really into that. Little People, Big World. I was, could go on. And is on. that TLC? Yeah. 
Okay. Old TLC. Old TLC. Well, good. Well, <laughs> it's good to know that John had a happy ending. <laughs> I do think he's much better now. Yeah. Right? No. Because <laughs> Kate was a bitch. Just kidding. Is that the... <laughs> <laughs> is that what is that? Okay. Good. Well, yeah. I'll watch John and Kate plus eight. <laughs> All <laughs> 10 seasons. Yeah, I will definitely watch it. I'm sure they're on Max now. Oh, for sure, because the TLC integration? It's really weird to look I, at all the shows mixed in together like that. I know. It's sad. You, you, you just have to go to the HBO portal and just be in the beautiful <laughs> HBO part. It's like The Wire, Thousand Pound Twins, Swamp Donkeys. What's that one again? <laughs> That's the HBO one. <laughs> wow, well, Swamp Donkeys. Okay, well, do you think that we did good for a late night after hours turtle time, our first in history? It had the same chaotic energy that... The two shows that we watched did. Good. Messy, sloppy, <laughs> weird. Maybe uh, bad. Potentially, <laughs> potentially unlawful. Exactly. But I am drinking a, um, what is this? A little uh, pet gnat. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's, like a little. It's like a sparkling orange wine. Oh. Um, because I had a, like, you know, a one serving little can, which honestly is such a great thing to have when I you don't want to pop a bottle for yourself just I, one serving i love that too can i have one after this of course thank you so much all right well this was an episode of turtle time unlike any other Th- uh, one where <laughs> after I, dark after i mean it's, should we call it that <laughs> yeah. turtle time after dark yeah yeah let's try to think of a pun that has after dark in it but still has something about the vanderpump rules and valley Try okay. but something like yeah <laughs> yeah something like let's Jack's riff after on dark. <laughs> Jack's after dark. We'll think about okay. it. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, that wasn't that. Okay, that wasn't good. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it. Uh, probably off mic. We're gonna go to Schwartz and Sandy's now potentially, and we'll vlog from there. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. We love you all so much, and please uh, do whatever you like to do after our episode. Rate, review, subscribe. Tell yep. your friends. This yep. isn't a secret podcast, right? <laughs> Again, if this is your first episode, I feel like we've had a few recently where if it was your first, you'd be like, what the hell is this? This one is obviously much better than our horrible <laughs> remote one. Not as good as last week's, but not our <laughs> A worst. little shorter too. Yeah, but people, I think we jam-packed a lot of shit in this, right? <laughs> we made it worth your while. Yeah. Okay, we love you so much, and we're going to go to Schwartz and Sandy's. Okay, bye. Bye. This one's for you tonight.